what I thought was so wonderful about the first film, the first time, was that they gave Doc Ock this wonderful redemptive moment. You know, and like all great villains, like a lot of villains in the Marvel Universe, he's, a, he's, he's become a villain kind of reluctantly or almost by accident. And, you know, the, you know uh, Kirk Connors, it happens to, you know, it, 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 there's, all, there's all sort of, you know, something happens and, every, and, the, and their world changes. So I knew that when John described what's going to be Doc Ock's first appearance in this film, that he just knows it's going to be like a moment of like, you know, it's going to be a fantastic... So I wanted to kind of make sure that I was in the right place, you know, in terms of the performance and everything. So it was useful to go back and look at the first film. But at the same time, it's a different director, it's a different movie, there's a freshness to it. So I didn't want to just kind of come back and replicate what we'd done before. It, it was important to me to arrive as if this was the first time. There's a mutual respect there and, you know, we're all kind of, you know, we know each other's work and we've, we've all been around for a while, you know, and, and uh, there's, a, there's a sense of, there is a sense of camaraderie that comes from a shared experience in terms of, you know, we've all done one of these before. Uh, in Willem's case, I think it's been more than one. Uh, uh, so there's a sense of, um, like we've kind of, you know, we've arrived at a place where we can enjoy this without being too precious about it. You know, we can, we can, we can, we can enjoy the, we can enjoy it for, for, for its, for all the marvelous things that it's giving us, but also for all the absurdities of it. You know, three grown men in kind of these costumes, kind of you know, sort of doing, giving as much energy to it as we would if we were playing Shakespeare or, or, you know, something else. You know, it's, it's, a, it's a wonderful, it's a wonderful place to be. Some actors like Jamie, who is a master at improv. I mean, he, he his brain just works so fast. And Tom as well. Tom, because Tom's got the experience of being the, of playing the character so many times, he just embody. He just knows the right tone. There's a couple of factors that go into that. I think one is that he's as you say, very enthusiastic. He loves this genre, he loves this world. He treats it with respect. Uh, he's a fan. Oh, but also, he loves bringing out the humor. You know, he wants the audience to, to, he wants the audience to find it not just dramatic and exciting, but he also wants, the, he wants them to find it as delicious as he does. He wants them to enjoy the moment. He wants, you know, he, he wants, so, you know, he's, he's always, in, he's encouraging us to improvise and to kind of throw in, you know, he always, when he's got the takes that he wants, he'll always say, okay, one more just for you. Do what you want to do. He takes the work very seriously, but himself, not at all. He doesn't, you know, he's not like, he's not one of those directors that kind of, you know, a friend of mine used to describe working with directors who, had a big jacket on with the word director on the back in lights. <laughs> you know, he's not one of those at all. You know, but he, he arrives with an enthusiasm like he's just come back from, you know, he just can't, he's just come back from the store and he's got a whole bunch of new comics that he hasn't bought yet, you know, that he hasn't seen before. He comes with a, a, a joy.